afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Today you're here with Copa Fink at the uh, Air Show Adventure 2008. I'm here with the AV8B Harrier 2 Plus, uh, Ace of Spades. We got our pilot, we got our maintainers, having a good time out here. I was uh, born and raised here in Wisconsin, actually, and uh, was home visiting my family on a weekend. I got a call from a recruiter. Next thing you know, I'm working on jets. Uh, having people yell at me all the time, having a great time, loving life right now. Come here for a little vacation, get to put on a great show here with everybody, and uh, hope you all enjoy. Cirrus Design's Vision SJ50 single engine personal jet offers exceptional fuel efficiency, flexible seating for up to seven, advanced avionics, and all the Cirrus safety features you expect, including the Cirrus airframe parachute system. With its V-tail design, the Cirrus Vision is technologically advanced, yet engineered to be simple to fly, to allow owner pilots more lifestyle pursuits than any other personal aircraft. Learn more about the Vision SJ50 at CirrusDesign.com. This is Rob Thinfrock for Aero TV at AirVenture 2008, and I am here with Staff Sergeant Kendra Kane, and we're talking about the AV-8B Harrier. Staff Sergeant, thank you for joining us today. Thank you for having me. Now, we've been talking a little bit with Doc over here about what it's like to fly the Harrier. He brings it back from a mission. What do you guys need to do in order to ready it for flight? Well, initially when the aircraft comes back, we uh, will stop him on the taxiway and check and make sure that his brakes aren't overheated because that would cause a fire. Then after that, we would uh, pull him into his parking spot, we'll chalk him and get his gear for him because he has a lot of things he has to carry in the cockpit, so it would be too hard for him to get out by himself. So he hands his gear down to us and then basically he's done for the day. Then we start with our inspections. We need to fuel it. We need to put water in it. We have to inspect the tires. We look at the whole entire aircraft over to make sure there's no leaks, nothing's falling off, there's no missing or loose fasteners, nothing's cracked or broken. So we have to do all these inspections and once that's through, which usually takes you know, an hour and a half, then we sign the aircraft ready for flight for the next day. And how often does Doc bring him back needing a little bit of repair? You can tell us. <laughs> no, he's an excellent pilot. He rarely brings back a broke bird. This is a, a big engine on this plane, 23,000 pounds of thrust out of this single engine turbofan. How often does it need to be taken down for repair as far as is taking it down to the core? Uh, every thousand hours, every thousand engine hour, we have to pull the engine and send it down. And they basically take it all the way apart, inspect it, and then put it back together, repairing or replacing whatever needs to be done to it. About how long does it take to replace an entire engine? Does it essentially plug into the aircraft, or is it a major teardown? <laughs> I wish it did. That would be great. No, actually, we have to take the entire wing off, and then once the wing is off, then we pull the engine out, put it on the stand, and send it down to get repaired, and then we have to put it back in there. But before we can put it in, we have to do more inspections to make sure everything's good to go. If they're good to go, then we can go ahead and put the new engine in, and that's if we have an engine. I think that Harrier mechanics in particular um, are superior mechanics. And I'm going to give my props out to my boys because just the, the level of difficulty is working on this aircraft and uh, working around the supply system, you know, being able to get parts, you know, is, is also difficult because they don't make the Harrier anymore. So getting parts is extremely difficult. So we really do, uh, we do a lot of hard work to keep these aircraft flying, to keep our pilots trained so that we can do our job over in Iraq and Afghanistan. Okay, we are cleared for our approach. Have our Garmin GPS set up to fly the LPV. And look, here comes the glide path. You're probably wondering how we can intercept a glide path when there's no ILS on the field. Well, hey, that's the beauty of WASP GPS. No ILS, no localizer, no problem. WASP gives us full vertical guidance even without ground-based navigation. Okay, next you're probably wondering why there's spit all over your side of the windshield. Hey, Doc, back with you. Uh, they wanted me to explain our, uh, how I control the aircraft in the hover. And what we have here, first thing I'll show you is our nozzles. As you can see right now, they are uh, facing fully aft, and that's what it looks like when I'm uh, flying, uh, conventionally, if we will, uh, the jet here. Uh, my maintenance crew is now going to swing the nozzles down, and you can see what they look like as I come into the hover. Now the nozzles are down, uh, facing about 80 degrees, which blows the vectored thrust now straight down versus aft, which allows me to hover. Now, while I'm controlling the aircraft in the hover, we have bleed air that comes off the engine uh, through the reaction control surfaces. Now we have these control surfaces on both wingtips, the tail, and the nose. If you look right here, you can see uh, the, the RCS duct on both the top and the bottom of the wing.
Now, the nose of the aircraft and the tail all has this as well. And the way it works is as I'm in the jet, if I move the stick to the left, this, uh, this puffer duct on the bottom will blow air, bleed air off the engine, and it'll actually turn the airplane uh, as, I, as I move the stick left and right. Same thing with the nose and tail. If I pull back on the, uh, on the stick, the puffer duct in the nose will open up and it will actually uh, move the nose of the aircraft up and the tail of the aircraft down. And that's how we control uh, the aircraft uh, in hover flight there. Same thing with the rudders. I can move the rudders left and right and the, uh, the RCS ducts in the tail uh, move back and forth as well. But you can see it slides open and shut. When that opens, like if I, uh, if I hit the right rudder, this one will open up. It'll blow air this way, which moves the tail that way. That's how I do that, that maneuver that we call the pedal turn. It's all I'm moving the rudders to, uh, to open up this back RCS duct.